This is the Rod Langway Fan Club. Welcome, everybody, to the Rod Langway Fan Club Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Roman. This is a special edition. This is our trade deadline show. I'm joined by a couple of co-hosts, a couple of guys who I would never trade away, Mr. John Snowden. I'd never trade you away either, buddy. And Mark Chechnita. I think if somebody offered you a first and A-tier prospect, I'd be packing my bags and I'd be okay with it. Guys, what a trade deadline. I can't believe it. I was not expecting this many trades. Yeah, it started early. That was a a shocking thing. Usually it's all collected along the deadline date, but uh, this year we got off to an early start, I think. Yes, well, in the spirit of Hamlet's Polonius, who once said that brevity is the soul of wit, we're going to try to keep it snappy today. We've compiled our top 10 trades. We might hit a couple other ones as well, but uh, let's get right to it. So where should we begin? Well, let's start early. Uh, The Vancouver Canucks were able to send Bo Horvat packing, and surprisingly, the recipient was the New York Islanders. I really like this trade for the Islanders. He seems like a Lou Lamarillo kind of guy. A little bit disappointed with Vancouver. Surprised they chose JT Miller over Bo Horvat, but that's another story. Yeah, I mean, I think that Bo Horvat really fits into the the Islanders' style. I mean, they sort of play a defensive game And he's a defensive first kind of forward, but it can also score. I think that in the future, this is going to pay dividends for them. But right now, I mean, they're probably not going to make the playoffs. So maybe for this season, it's not such such a sexy move for this season. But going forward, I really like it, especially that they were able to sign him long term. Yeah, that's the that's the big win right there is getting him signed long term. If it doesn't work out this year, they're going to have a long track with him and Barzell as their one two punch down the middle. And even if it doesn't work out this year with Sorokin in between the pipes this is going to be a team that will be in the mix in the east for quite some time to come i think another early trade was the vladimir tarasenko being traded from the st louis blues to the new york rangers what do we think of this trade and vladimir tarasenko had a great resurgent year last year so far this year he hasn't been very good but all he needs probably is some good line mates and and motivated team and he's in a great position to succeed yeah lots of underachievers in st louis this year i think a decent acquisition Right wing depth was an issue, and I think this is a good first step at addressing that need. Another big trade was the acquisition of Ryan O'Reilly by the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, Jeffy, you're a big fan. What do you think? I love this deal, guys. I really do. O'Reilly, he's a cup winner. He's a character guy. He's still excellent on faceoffs. Sure, maybe he's lost a step or two, but to get his kind of leadership on the Leafs is fantastic. And I love they got Achari in this trade. What a character guy. Yeah, I think that O'Reilly in the playoffs will be even more effective. The Leafs now with the potential of a 1-2-3 of Matthews, Tavares, and O'Reilly, although they have experimented with them on the wing as well. I think that this could be really important playoff time, having that guy you can look to to lead you and get that big goal. Uh, I think this might be what pushes the Leafs to the next round. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little uh, wary of picking the Leafs to win any series, but this is a guy who has won the Smythe Trophy. He is a guy who knows how to win in the playoffs, and I think it's a great move by the Leafs. In fact, I, I can't think of a better move that the Leafs could have made. The great, great addition. Speaking of Canadian teams bolstering their Stanley Cup aspirations, the Edmonton Oilers made a significant addition on the blue line, bringing in Matthias Ekholm. Yes, this was a big trade with Nashville, and Tyson Berry goes the other way, right? This guy has been amazing on the power play, but I think they decided they needed some more two-way play back there. Yeah, I mean, I think Ekholm has been one of the most underrated defensemen in the league, to be honest. And they feel like Evan Bouchard is ready to step up into that offensive role on the power play. And so I think it's really great to add a really solid defensive defenseman. And he's going to really improve their chances, I think, in the playoffs here. Should be noted that he is under contract for a few more years after this year, making a pretty good chunk of change, just a shade over six mil. I don't know how well this one ages, but the Oilers are ready to make a run right now. So hopefully it works out for them. While we are on the topic of big blue line trades, we have to talk about Jacob Chikrin. He goes from the Arizona Coyotes to the Ottawa Senators. I mean, this was a deal that was kind of two years in the making. A lot of people were hoping that he would go to a contender, but he goes to a a team that is sort of in the middle of a rebuild. And I think it's a great addition for Ottawa. Probably not this year. They're probably not going to make the playoffs. Never know. You never know. You never know. But... I think that going forward, this is a really good move for Ottawa. I think this pushes them well beyond the middle of the rebuild. I think the rebuild is nearly complete. I mean, you've got 
potentially now a one, two, three punch, Jake Sanderson, Thomas Shabbat, and now Jacob Chikrin. That's not a bad one, two, three punch. You throw in Artem Zub, who's a good defensive defenseman and nice foundation with all the talent they have up front. I'm actually slightly surprised that Arizona didn't get a little bit more for Chikrin considering how long this went on for, but um, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, this franchise at this point, uh, it needs to be addressed because they have been bad for so long and they have not gotten anything for some of their best players. You'd think for a team that's rebuilding to have a 25-year-old defenseman at his peak might be something you want to hang on to, but I guess not. Yeah, he's 24, but uh, point taken, Jeff. So we have to talk about the Boston Bruins. They have acquired Dmitry Orloff and Garrett Hathaway from the Washington Capitals in a big trade. I mean, this is a team that is far and away the best in the league, and they're adding to it. And then they also acquired Tyler Bertuzzi from the Detroit Red Wings. And this is a guy, he's put up 30 goals in the past. He's young, he's entering his prime. And I mean, for them to add this piece at this point, I mean, it's it's kind of gross. Yeah, Brad Marchant, light. Yeah, very on brand for the Bruins, getting guys like Hathaway and Bertuzzi. And they already and have- Yes, and Orlov as well. He's got a little sandpaper in his game. I think that having depth will be important for the Bruins in the playoffs. They got a lot of veterans. You want to keep their minutes under control, especially if you're looking to go long in the playoffs. Now, this next trade had to be in the top 10 just because it was so strange. A real head scratcher. The Tampa Bay Lightning paid a King's Ransom five draft picks, including a first rounder, ironically for a man who was never drafted, Tanner Genot. You know what, guys? I really like Tanner Janot. I thought last year his rookie season was excellent. This guy's got a motor that won't quit, but it does scream of massive overpayment. Yeah, I mean, T-Bay really needs to fill some holes in the roster if they're going to compete, you know, for the Stanley Cup again. And they're still in that win now window. But uh, yes, it does seem like an overpay. I, I don't know. I don't know. It just seems a lot. Maybe they see something in this guy. As you said, he he was a rookie last year. He had a great season. I mean, broke 20 goals and he adds a lot of sandpaper to the roster. And he, I could see him being great in the playoffs, but I mean, the price was pretty high. I think Tampa Bay is going to be in some big trouble about five, six years down the line when all of their stars age out and they have nothing coming because the next three years are absolutely barren when it comes to draft picks. Yeah, I guess maybe they're hoping he could be this year's Nick Paul. Nick Paul didn't cost five assets, but point taken, Johnny. Yeah. Guys, if we're talking top 10 trades at the deadline, for me personally, best trade, New Jersey Devils get Timo Meyer from the San Jose Sharks. Wow. The Devils are a real contender. Yeah. And you know, I think the price of acquisition is quite reasonable. They did give up a 2023 20, first round pick, but beyond that, the only roster player to leave Fabian Zetterland, not really a guy that moves the needle that much. They didn't have to give up Mercer. They didn't have to give up Alexander Holtz, one of their top prospects. Simon Nemich, not on the move. I think that New Jersey set up really well for being one of the best teams in the East for quite some time to come. Yeah, I I mean, I got to agree. I mean, I think this is a team that had a ton of offensive pop, team with a lot of finesse. Um, One of the things they were lacking was a little bit of grit. And I mean, Timo Meyer, he's a big body. He's a power forward. He's a guy who can score goals. And I mean, this is a great move for them. Maybe this year is not quite their year, but it could be. But going forward over the next two, three, four years, I mean, this is a great addition. New Jersey is set up to be a successful team over the next while. Goaltending might be the last piece for them. Well, I mean, if we're talking about top 10 moves, biggest name, I think, that was uh, on the trade block and uh, it happened late. Patrick Kane goes from the Chicago Blackhawks to the New York Rangers. Big move. What do we think about this one? Definitely the biggest name to move, but not the biggest return. Now, it should be noted that the Rangers had the Blackhawks in a tough spot. Kane only wanted to play in New York. And as a result, they get him for a second and a fourth round pick. Now, it should be noted that second round pick is conditional. If the Rangers make it to the conference finals, that will become a first. But still, what a value for one of the best playoff performers of his generation. I have to say, when I watched Patrick Kane earlier this season, he didn't look like the same guy. He didn't look like the Patrick Kane of old. But man, once his name was on the trading block, he went on quite a run. And he shows everybody he still has a lot of gas in the tank. 
Yeah, I love Patrick Kane. He's a great player. Uh, but this just reeks of the Rangers trying to buy a championship. This is something that happens quite often with this team. They go out and they get the best free agent available. I'm not sure it was the best fit. I mean, they already had Tarasenko on the right wing. Do they really need another right winger? It may not hurt, but I'm not sure if this is a team that is assembled to really win a championship. I don't know. You're deep in a series. You need a big goal. Patrick Kane is one of the names that pops into my head as the guy you'd want to have in your lineup. How about some of the other moves that uh, Chicago made? Yeah, so we've done our top 10. We've got a few other things we should probably talk about, some you know, honorable mentions. So while we're on the topic of the Blackhawks shedding talent and contracts, Max Domi on the move to the Dallas Stars for a second round pick. I think that's a nice addition for Dallas. What do you guys think? Absolutely. I think Dallas needs this kind of energetic player, a little bit of sandpaper. I think Domi fits the bill. little surprised, though, about Jonathan Taves. Yes, it is a shame about Jonathan Taves. He was a trade target for some teams earlier in the year, but uh, apparently he's been dealing with long COVID and some other lingering health issues. So uh, he's going to be stepping back from the game for a little while, and it's a little unclear what the future is going to hold for this guy. What is clear is this is the end of an era for the Chicago Blackhawks as they go full rebuild. And another decorated veteran that was on the move is Jonathan Quick, not once, but twice. Now, this one's a little bit different because this is the Los Angeles Kings gearing up for another run. They've already kind of done a rebuild on the fly. Quick is out, but Jonas Corposalo is in, and I think this could solidify their goaltending position. On top of that, they get Denis Gavrikov, one of the best defensive defensemen on the market as well. And Quick goes eventually to Vegas. What do you think there? Yeah, a bit of a head scratcher, I guess. Uh, there were some questions going into the season about Vegas's goaltending, but it hasn't really been much of a problem throughout the season. Um, Logan Thompson's been good. The backups have been good. Maybe they're just looking for a little extra playoff experience in case things fall apart. Quick was a great goaltender, especially in the playoffs, Conn Smythe winner. So maybe they're just looking at that. I think he's just a name at this point. I think he's not as quick as he used to be. Uh, maybe this is a sign, though, that Logan Thompson will not be coming back this year. Okay, so quick thoughts on a few of the lesser deals. Do you guys think the Colorado Avalanche did enough? If everyone comes back healthy, I think they're pretty damn good already. Lars Eller for a second round pick. This is a good addition. Solidifies them down the middle. He's already been part of a Stanley Cup winning team as a pretty significant piece. I like it. John, did the Carolina Hurricanes do enough at this deadline? Well, they added Jesse Pugliarvi, who was definitely on the outs in Edmonton. He'll be reunited with Sebastian Ajo. They were great line mates uh, on the Finnish World Juniors team, so maybe he can get something going with them. Uh, this might be his last chance, though. Uh, they also added Shane Gostisbear, who's a good offensive defenseman, and uh, Carolina over the years has lost some offensive punch from the back end, so maybe this can fill in that gap and uh, push them over the top. Mark, how about the Washington Capitals? It was a little bit weird to see these guys bow out, but they're kind of retooling for next year. What did you think of their moves overall? Yeah, some big veterans on the way out. Uh, I do like something that they brought back, though. Rasmus Sandin is about to you know, start entering his prime as an NHL defenseman. I think he slots in nicely there and keeps the Capitals competitive as they still have some really high-end veterans on that roster. Okay, boys. I mean, the Pittsburgh Penguins, 16 years in a row in the playoffs. This year, it's at risk. Um, they made some moves. Uh, what do you think, Jeffy? I am not convinced. I think a lot of the fan base is not too happy with Ron Hextall. Nick Benino is in. Michael Granlin is in. Uh, Teddy Bluger is out. This Penguins lineup, I don't think, has improved enough. Speaking of teams who have not improved enough, I'm sorry, John, but your Winnipeg Jets just did not do enough at the deadline. Yes, well, it's a little unclear whether the Jets are coming or going at this point. Uh, they added Nino Niederreiter, a uh, decent power forward, can score some goals. And Vladimir Nemestikov, he's had a bit of an up-and-down career, but, you know, maybe he can add a little bit of depth. Um, it does look like the Jets will probably sneak into the playoffs here, uh, so we'll see what they can add. And Mark, how about your Montreal Canadiens? And let's keep it brief. A lot of disappointment. People were expecting big things. But Monaghan and Edmondson, the two biggest assets they had, both have health concerns around them. They did manage to flip Dadnov for Denis Gurionov, who could maybe develop into a good middle six winger for them, but uh, underwhelming. So listen, guys, before we wrap it up here, I do want to get your opinion on the Vancouver Canucks. It was kind of a, I don't know, a little bit of a schizophrenic trade deadline for them. One of the weirdest franchises in the NHL. You think the rebuilding. 
They move out Horvat. They move out Shen for future assets. And then they turn around and give up a first round pick for Philip Hronik. Now, I don't dislike the player. I think he's got some potential to be a good top four defender. But what are they doing here? Are they trying to retool and become competitive again right away? Because I don't think that's the best path forward for them. What do you guys think? I thought it was an odd move. Oh, well, they're in a tough spot. I mean, they have some nice young players, of course. But uh, it's been a bit of a management disaster. I just don't really know what they should do now. And lastly, guys, what was our favorite trade? Easy. It's the Richie for Richie deal. Not the biggest one, but I love these anomaly trades. Yeah, brother for brother, Nick for Brett. I mean, it's a great trade. The rich get richer. I think it'd be cool if they took each other's numbers and just kind of see if anyone notices. Maybe Calgary fans be like, wow, like Richie's looking really good out there now. And then Arizona fans wait. I guess they don't really have any fans. They probably won't notice. But uh, yeah. I thought cool it was experiment. a fun deal. I almost thought it just shows the GMs have a really good sense of humor. Yeah, that would be good social media fodder. Well, I mean, it was a very active trade deadline. Crazy times. But it's over now. The stretch run is upon us, gentlemen. That's right. And guys, we will see you again in a couple of weeks for our stretch run report. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. And I hope you had yourselves the time. Okay, boys. We, uh, now that I got you here, we really need to talk about the finances, man. I got a thing. I got a thing lined up. I really do. Well, I, I, I hope, you you yourself time. hope you had yourself a time. Hope you had yourself a time. Hope you had time. Hope you had time.